Call of War World War II is a free online strategy game that gathers millions of players worldwide. You fight up to 100 other players in real time in games that can take weeks to complete. The games feature World War II historically accurate maps and units that allows you to create your own path and rewrite history. Call of War World War II is fully cross-platformed. Your objective is to take over the world. Define your own strategy, build powerful armies by combining dozens of different unit types and fight for world domination. I've set up a special game of Call of War for the first viewers who click the link in the description. Go to the website or app and type my name in the search bar and enter the password Mark Felton. Mark Felton Productions viewers are getting a special gift. Click on the link below to get 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. The offer is available for only 30 days, so click the link in the description, choose a country and fight your way to victory in epic real-time battles. When we think of the Allied aerial campaign against Germany, perhaps we see a couple of images in our minds. US B-17s struggling through flak and fighters on daring daylight raids, and the grim determination of RAF Bomber Command's Lancasters surging east through darkness and then lit by the flames of burning German cities thousands of feet below. But one Allied nation has been airbrushed from the aerial campaign against Germany, and it is the nation that struck the first blow against Hitler's capital, a distant and difficult target to attack, but a target of enormous symbolism and propaganda value. That nation was France, and it was an attack that was suppressed by the Nazi authorities, deeply embarrassed that an Allied aircraft had managed to reach and bomb the Reich capital particularly as Luftwaffe chief Hermann Göring had proclaimed, if any bombs fall on the Reich, I will change my name to Meyer, meaning that because Meyer is a common German surname, Göring would become a nobody. It was an expression that Göring would soon regret uttering. France was invaded by Germany, along with the Low Countries, on the 10th of May 1940. Though huge and capable, the French army did not understand the new German warfare of Blitzkrieg, and along with the British Expeditionary Force, it suffered defeat after defeat, sapping military and civilian morale as the German advance continued. The British began evacuating its forces out of Dunkirk in late May 1940, along with tens of thousands of French troops, while the rest of the French army fought on. On the 3rd of June, in the midst of the Dunkirk operation, German aircraft bombed Paris. It was seen as an affront to the French people, and the government demanded revenge. The German raid had encompassed 300 aircraft, but they had only flown a short distance to bomb Paris. The French had few aircraft still available, and fewer still able to fly the great distance to Berlin and back. The only suitable types were former transports taken over by the French Navy, the Farman F-223, a large aircraft that had first flown in 1938. A rather ugly aircraft, its amazing range was what made it so appealing, able to fly 5,000 miles on just over 3,000 gallons of fuel. With a 10-ton payload capacity, it could also be easily modified for bombing. Three aircraft were modified, each fitted with racks. But the type was very vulnerable to German fighters, having only one 8mm machine gun in a dorsal turret for protection. Following the Paris air raid, the government asked Captain Henri Dallier, commanding a squadron of three bomber converted F-223s at Bordeaux in France, to launch a raid on Berlin. It sounded like a suicide mission, but Dallier planned carefully. One aircraft was selected for the mission, a plane named appropriately Jules Verne, after the famous author of adventure stories. Delier would captain the plane himself. The target selected was the Siemens factory in Berlin, a huge area of both factories and also housing for workers. The plane would head north along the Atlantic coast, go up the English Channel following the coast at low level to avoid German radars and hopefully German fighters, and then turn east to fly over southern Denmark, also under German occupation. Then it would turn south to attack Berlin before making a long exit across Germany and France to land in Paris. 
Such a mammoth mission was only possible because of the Farman's massive range. Delier and Jules Verne took off from Bordeaux at 3.30 on the afternoon of the 7th of June 1940. They followed the route I've described, making the turn into German territory. Berlin appeared as a glow on the horizon. The Germans so confident that the Allies couldn't bomb the capital that no blackout was in operation. At midnight, the French bomber arrived over the city's eastern suburbs, Delier fooling German air defences by pretending to be coming into land at Tempelhof Airport, and then revved up and moved on to Tegel. A few minutes later, they were over Siemensstadt, and dumped all the bombs, followed by a dozen incendiary bombs physically thrown out of the passenger door by two crewmen. Banking away, German searchlights and flak came alive, but Delier was able to confuse the gunners by following a low-level irregular course before heading southwest towards France. No German aircraft were able to find him in the darkness, as night fighters at this time were very primitive. The big bomber touched down at Paris Orly Airport at 1.30 p.m. on the 8th of June to a triumphant welcome. Delier had dumped a total of 8 250 kilo and 80 10 kilo bombs on Berlin that night. Little physical damage had been done, but the German authorities were left red faced by the daring French raid. They decided to cover up the affair, claiming that the searchlights and gunfire over Berlin that night had been an exercise. Two nights later, Delier and Jules Verne bombed the Heinkel aircraft factory in Rostock, and two days after that, bombed Venice in Italy, also dropping propaganda leaflets on Rome. France surrendered on the 22nd of June 1940. The three F-223s were flown to the unoccupied zone. However, the French resistance burned Jules Verne on the 8th of November 1942, as the Germans moved to occupy Vichy France. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share and also visit my audiobook channel War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.